Welcome everyone, I'm Ricky from Tech Talk and today it's my in-depth review of both the Google Pixel 3a and the Google Pixel 3a XL. So these are Google's latest devices and they sit alongside the Google Pixel 3 and the Google Pixel 3 XL. They're more their flagship devices so these are more budget end. So the Google Pixel 3a comes in at £400 and the Google Pixel 3a XL comes in at £470. So relatively cheaper compared to their flagship devices but still offer quite a lot of power and punch for their performance and their price. So sit back, grab that popcorn and enjoy my in-depth review. So first what we're going to do is actually take a look around our devices and delve in. What I want to just say is there is only two key differences between these devices when we go through spec wise. One is the screen and the resolution that you're going to find on the two different models and secondly because you've got a bigger screen you've got a bigger battery. They're the only main two differences between these devices but otherwise all the specs I read out and the features you're going to find on both these devices. So now let's take a look and explore around our device and what we're going to do is start off at the top. So for this at the top you're going to find a 3.5 mil headphone jack. Yes they've kept the headphone jack whereas in 2019 majority of devices and manufacturers are actually scrapping the headphone jack and just giving you an adapter which can be a little bit frustrating you might want to listen to your music but still need to charge your device. So with this device you can do that also you can sync over data as well but this still means you can add in your own headphones and listen to your music while charging your device instead of carrying an adapter around which can be frustrating. So as I'm pointing all of these out they are the same on the Google Pixel 3a and the XL version. You will have one of two microphones, it does have dual microphone which is really good and a real helpful thing to have. Coming down the right hand side there is one cosmetic difference you're going to notice between these devices. So with the white model here we have a bright orange vibrant power button and then you have white volume keys. On the black model you've got a black power button and a black volume key so they're very hidden and they're actually in that unibody design whereas this one really stands out and with my visual impairment that's a really nice thing to see. Turning to the bottom of our device you're going to find one of two dual stereo speakers that means your content is just going to pop and come alive with sound which is really cool and I'm going to show you a trailer a little bit later on. Also you're going to find another microphone so that's one of your two dual microphones and you have USB for syncing and charging up your device. Down the left hand side at the top first of all you're going to find your sim tray. This takes a nano size sim card but please note there's no micro SD card storage option. Both these devices offer 64 gigabytes of internal storage. So one thing I want to highlight with these is that you can give your phones a little squeeze. If you squeeze down at the bottom you're going to get actually Google Assistant there to help you answer all of your questions. And we're going to delve in and talk about Google Assistant a little bit later on. In the setting options you can change and adjust the strength that you need to squeeze your devices. So when you lay your devices on top of each other you're going to get to see the actual thickness. So the thickness wise is 8.2 two millimeters so they both are the same thickness when it comes to weight as the 3a is slightly smaller that's 147 grams and the XL version is 160 grams just because it has a larger screen and a slightly larger battery so moving on to the front of our devices now and actually talking about the displays this is where like I said there's a little difference so we're going to do them individually so talking about the 3a first of all the display size is 5.6 inch it's an FHD plus with a resolution of 2220 by 1080 and that's an OLED panel on here. Your pixel density is going to be 441 pixels per inch which is actually really high and please remember that price point at £400. Its aspect ratio is 18 by 5 by 9. It has dragon trail glass on this device. It also offers an always on display so if I actually power it off here there we go you can see the always on display there and you can use the Google imprint on the back there the fingerprint sensor to actually unlock in lightning fast. Then moving on to the XL version so the screen size here is 6 inch so you've got 0.4 of an inch difference in screen size. It's an FHD plus with a resolution of 2160 by 1080. Again it's an OLED panel and the pixel density for this model is 402. It's a little bit less compared to the 3A and that is because the screen size is a little bit more. The aspect ratio is 18 by 9 and again built into the display is a dragon trail glass for protection and again this offers you an always on display. So both these devices offer 100,000 to one super contrast ratio so everything is going to look bright vibrant and just come alive on these displays they also offer thanks to the OLED displays you can have them true black levels so when you're watching something if it's black it's actually going to be black on the display looking at the front cameras here not too much to shout home about you do have an 8 megapixel f 2.0 
fixed focus and it offers 84 degrees field of view so you can get quite a few people in there for them lovely selfies or you can get everything in that you want to show if you've been traveling or visiting different things if you want to take video you can and it offers different levels of resolution so you can have 1080p 720p or 480p all at 30 frames per second so you can record a video and upload that to social media and share it with everyone you want to so turning around to the back of our devices this is where it gets a little bit interesting a couple of little things I want to talk about the Google imprint fingerprint sensor which is rocket fast so it's really quick you place your finger on and it opens up and you're ready to go and also you can actually use it to swipe through your notifications as well so above that you're going to notice a textual differences in the actual body as well the unibody design so at the bottom you've got a matte look and then at the top you've got this glossy finish which looks really nice but it does love fingerprints also you're going to find a single lens camera up there so it's a 12.2 dual pixel sony imx 363 sensor which has autofocus with dual pixel phase detection it also offers optical and electronic image stabilization it's an f1.8 aperture with 76 degrees field of view so a little bit less than what the front camera was but when you come to video recording you can use it at 1080p at 30 60 or 120 frames per second 720p at 30 60 or 240 frames per second so at 240 frames that's where you get a slow motion and you should see a video where i actually done that with a water balloon that looks really cool then also you can record at 4k that's at 30 frames per second so in the camera as well you're going to find loads of different modes loads of different things to choose from the one i do like that has come from the google pixel 3 is the night sight mode so you can lose the flash and get the shot that you want so night sight gives you rich detail and color even in the dark and i have experienced that with that it hasn't been a let down has been a real good plus so if i'm out with friends or in a dark sort of pub or a dark area take my phone out take a picture and yes it will improve that light in there compared to other devices so also in the camera application you can find portrait mode with depth editor so that's why it's got that dual pixel so it can offer that bokeh effect so you can choose which depth you want so you're the only subject that is shown or you can have a little bit of the background showing then also you have color pop so you can make them colors come alive and absolutely pop and look amazing to share on Instagram and share on your social media so then when it comes to taking all these photographs what's one key benefit of having it a Google pixel device Device. and that is unlimited storage and save your photos and videos with free unlimited storage in high quality Google Photos and that's a really positive thing so that's a real key highlight to me as you only have 64 gigabytes of internal storage you are going to potentially need to move them photographs especially if you're taking it in the highest resolution and 4k video that can all be uploaded to Google Photographs and save there for you and then saving storage on your device for other things like your media so that's a real positive thing having a Google Pixel device is having that unlimited storage there with Google Photograph. So in the Photos application, there are so many different options that you can play around with, change and adjust. And it's been really fun to just do all different things if I want to, AR Playground. You've also got Photo Booth mode as well if you want to try and capture that first kiss with someone, if you and your friends are just having a bit of fun. So moving on and talking about the CPU and the GPU, the engine room of our device. So let's unlock and take a little look. So both of them, like I said, have 64 gigabyte of internal storage. Both of them are running Android Android 9 Pi, but obviously they will get the push to Android Q very, very quickly. Even you can get the beta on these devices now. But let's go through the power and the performance. So the CPU is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 670 processor. It's a 64-bit octa-core processor. The core's running at 2 gigahertz and 1.7 gigahertz. Not that high, but you've got to remember the price points. The GPU comes from Adranu and it's a 615. It has a Titan M security module, which means your privacy and your data is locked down and safe on your device. Device. Both of these models come with four gigabytes of RAM. So remember I said there were two key differences between these devices. This is the other one, the battery. So on the Google Pixel 3a, you've got 3000 milliamp hour, and on the 3a XL, you've got 3700 milliamp hour. It's power delivery 2.0. So you get seven hours of usage with just 15 minutes of charge with 18 watts all day battery. So that's really impressive and it does charge up really quickly. So Google states that it lasts up to 30 hours with Pixel's adaptive battery, which learns your favorite apps that you use all the time and reduces the power to those you rarely use. Also digital well-being, Google really focused on this and again it's really key to make sure that we take care of our digital well-being and improve our lives. So when it comes to connectivity of course it's LTE, 4G connectivity for these devices and then 3G and 2G depending where you are and what networks. You've got dual band Wi-Fi on these devices, 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz, 802.11 ABGN AC. You've got Bluetooth 5.0. Also you're going to find NFC 
NFC, which is really helpful. So I like using NFC to transfer things or for paying for things. Also built into these devices, you're going to find a Google Cast. So if you have a Google Chromecast at home, you can just cast away to any devices, making it simple and easy to come in. You're watching a YouTube trailer and say, I want to watch it on the TV. I can do. I can just flick it over and it's so simple and so easy to do. So coming into some extras now. So first of all is the color. The 3A is in just black. The 3A XL is clearly white. And they also have another color called purple-ish, which is available as well. I think that's a really good name and find that quite funny. The device itself is made up of a polycarbonate body, the Dragon Trail glass. It has the pixel imprint fingerprint sensor, which is fast, fluid, and works majority of the time. I'd say nine out of 10 times it works. And it's most probably me making the fault on the 10th time, just not lining up my finger. The bin on the back, it is in an ideal location for you to just put your finger on there, tap to unlock, and away you go. It's so simple and so easy to do. I haven't had any issues as of yet. The digital well-being, we have to be really focused on now and really worried about making sure that we don't use our devices too much and we do take a break away from them. So one thing I really liked about these devices was the option of a theme. So swiping over here, you can see this one is in a dark mode and then the 3A is in a light mode. In the dark mode, it just makes it a little bit easier to read, a little bit more easier to understand what I'm looking at. So coming home here as well, so if I bring in my widgets here where you will notice a difference between the two where one is a dark theme, one is a light theme. Again, that's really helpful and really nice to see that that option is there for me. There's subtle hints and changes throughout the device that you'll notice when you choose them two different themes. So with these devices coming from Google, it does have Google Assistant on there and there's multiple different ways of actually getting to your Google Assistant. So first of all, you can touch and hold the button. That will bring up Google Assistant. You can then squeeze your devices. That will bring up Google Assistant. Then also in the search box down here at the bottom, if you just tap the little dots here, that brings up Google Assistant as well. And with Google Assistant, you know you can change and adjust so much and you can just really enjoy what you do with Google Assistant. You can help it control your life, making it easier for you. So say you had lights in your home, you could tell it to turn the lights on and off. If you had blinds, there are people that have shutter movements for their blinds that they can raise and lower their blinds. There's all different options. If you have a home security camera, you could check on that. You can check your battery levels. You can change your brightness. You can change accessibility options through Google Assistant. Google Assistant is a very powerful tool and I'm really pleased to see it on here. We are all really worried about our security security and our privacy but both these devices come built in with a Titan M security chip. So from passwords to OS, Google custom made Titan M security chip helps you protect your most sensitive data. And I'm really pleased that's built on here. And actually all my data is gonna be kept safe on my device and my privacy is kept key. So one thing that I really like from Google is with a Pixel device, you are gonna get the updates as soon as they drop. So when it comes to updates, we always want to get the latest update and you always want to be first to get it. So with the Google Pixel, devices they say you'll get three years of updates so automatic security and OS updates will make sure that your phone is protected against the latest threats so three years worth of security and OS updates which means your devices will have a longevity as well for lasting a long time so coming into my thoughts and what I've really enjoyed I was actually pleasantly surprised with both of these models so when you look at the cost and look at the specs and when you actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis you wouldn't be sorry in making a decision decision to buy either the 3A, depending on the size that you want, or the 3A XL. Me personally, my mind is always going to the XL version because of the larger screen. So with that, you get a larger battery as well, which is more helpful for me with my social media and everything I need to do on a device. I need that function there to use all the time. So I don't want to go constantly charging my device or sort of constantly looking for a charger. That's frustrating. I haven't done that. I've used this device on multiple different days out when I've used it for testing the photography, day-to-day -day usage, and battery testing it's been a real good pleasure for me to use the 3a itself as well it is small it is compact but it is a nice design it all depends what you choose and what's the best option for you all games have worked i've enjoyed playing games i've enjoyed my social media i've enjoyed using these devices together at the same time as well as taking individual ones out and using them separately as well so if you need a pocket rocket i would say go for the 3a that fits in your pocket you can go away and use it on a daily
daily basis and won't be upset. If you need the bigger screen and you need the bigger battery, you're gonna go for the Google Pixel 3a XL. So sadly, both these devices don't offer a micro SD card storage ability, but that really isn't a problem with Google Photos and being able to back up your photos and videos in high resolution and unlimited amounts, you're not really that bothered because that's what's gonna take up most of your storage. So you can use then the storage options of Google Drive, and then obviously you can use third-party cloud storage options as well. So mainly on your device, it's just gonna be your media that you watch and then taking up from apps and that. So 64 gigabytes of internal storage is enough if you use the cloud-based services as well. So when it comes into price, the Pixel 3a is at 399 pounds. The Pixel 3a XL is at 469 pounds. It is available on the Google Store through Carphone Warehouse, EE, MobilePhonesDirect.com, Argos, and BuyMobiles.net. All them links will be in the description. So I wanted to send out a massive thank you to Google for sending out both these devices to show on the channel. If I haven't spoke about anything you want to know about, please leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to help if you have any inquiries as well. Just drop it below. In the description, you're going to find links to Google Store UK and US, and also them third-party retailers as well that I mentioned. For me, Ricky, thanks always for watching, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to stay updated with all of my latest videos. From me, I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.